What's up guys to another episode of Nursing and Flow. Today's episode we'll be discussing math. In my opinion, math is probably one of the most underrated subjects that you're going to take in all of nursing school. Why? Because when you're taking those prereqs, you're only really taking one math class. Statistics. But overall, Math is very important because one, you're dealing with dosages, calculation, and numbers. One slip up and one miscalculation, you can mess up with someone's life here. So it's very important to take it very seriously. I remember back in nursing school, I had to take the dreaded math, dose, and calculation exam. It was a very high stakes test. If you mess up the test more than once or twice, you end up failing the whole class. So during my fourth semester of nursing school, I actually remember failing one of my math exams. And it was one of the most scariest moments of my life. I mean, here I am at the end of the road, and one test is in my way. I had to study my butt off for a whole week, I retook the test, and I recovered. So don't fret if you fail that test for the first time. It's completely recoverable. All you have to do is study hard, work on those practice questions, and you will do just fine. Trust me. There's different methods of going over the math. There's ratios, there's desire or have, but my personal favorite is something called dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis, for visual learners like myself, lays out all the numbers on the table. It may take longer than usual, but trust me, it's well worth it. With dimensional analysis, you start with what you want to solve for and you work your way up from there. All right, so we're gonna be demonstrating three questions on how dimensional analysis works out for me. Hope you guys enjoy. So in question number one, you're given an order of LASIK 60 milligrams IV now. And the first part of the question asks, how many milliliters will the nurse give? We're gonna set up my way. We're gonna put the mLs on top taking what we have in the problem, which is two mLs per 20 milligrams. And we take the order, the 60 milligrams of Lasix, and we set it up like this. Now, reason being we set it up like this is so we can visualize the calculations. We can go ahead and cross off the milligrams. And when we calculate the problem, you should be getting six cc's. Now the second part of the question will ask you how long will it take for the nurse to administer the medication? If you look carefully in the question, you're given a recommended rate of 10 milligrams per minute. So we're going to set it up. We'll put one minute over 10 milligrams. We'll take the order of what we have, which is 60 milligrams of Lasix. Set it up like so. And you should be left six minutes. The second question asks you what rate would the nurse set the infusion pump at mLs or cc's per hour? The order you're given is 1,000 cc's of LR, lactated ringers, and you're going to run it from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Now here's what we're going to do. We know that 8 a.m. to 8 p.m is equivalent to 12 hours. So all you really have to do is take the 1,000 cc's over 12 hours, and you will be left with 83.3 or 83 mLs per hour. Now the second part of the question asks what drop rate drops per minute will the nurse calculate? Well, we're given a drop rate of 10 drops per ml. So this is how we're gonna calculate it. We take what we have, which is the 10 drops per ml. And what we want is drops per minute. So we already know from the first part of the question, the infusion rate is 83 cc's an hour or ml. And then from the hour, we know that one hour is equivalent to 60 minutes. If you set it up like this, you can automatically cross the mLs, you cross the hours, and you're going to calculate 10 times 83 divided by 60. And you're going to be left with about 14 drops per minute. All right, so the last question is going to be a little bit tricky, but it involves heparin. So the first part of the question asks you, what is the dose of the heparin bolus? Now you're given a bolus heparin at 50 units per kilogram, and you know that the patient's weight is 90 kilograms. So 
dried it out, we take the 50 unit bolus per kilogram, we take the weight, which is 90 kilograms, cross off the kilograms, and you're left with 4,500 units. So the second part of the question asks you, how many mLs will you give for the heparin bolus? Well, from part A, you figured out that the dose is 4,500 units. So, you take the 4,500 units that you have, and you take the second part which you need, which is the stock. You have a heparin sodium stock of 10,000 units per mL. So if we set it up, so that we put the 10,000 units on the bottom per mL, cross off the units, you will be left with 0 0.45 mLs. Part C of the question now asks you how many units is the heparin infusion? Well, you're given a heparin infusion rate of 20 units per kilogram per hour. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the 20 units per kilogram, and if you recall, the patient's weight was 90 kilograms. We put one hour on the bottom because what we want is units per hour. We cross the kilograms, and you should be left with 1,800 units per hour. So the last part of the question asks you, what rate will you set the pump? Now keep in mind, whenever you ask the question about what rate, you assume that it's going to be cc's or mls per hour, because that's the standard rate. Given that fact, we're going to take what we have, which is the 500 cc's or mls, over 25,000 units. And in addition to that, you take the answer from the previous question for the heparin infusion, which is 1,800 units. cross it out, to cross out the units, we're left with cc's per hour. You should be getting 36 cc's per hour. Let's practice with some titration. As an IMC nurse, I'm dealing with heparin infusions all the time. And per hospital protocol, you're typically given a heparin protocol, meaning if your PTT was at a certain level, you titrate up, you titrate down, or leave it alone, the rate of the heparin infusion that you currently have based on that. So the question asks us, if the PTT was 60 and the protocol stated you need to increase the rate by two units per kilogram per hour, what is the new heparin infusion dosage at units per hour? Let's keep it nice and simple. If you recall, the original heparin infusion rate was 20 units per kilogram per hour. Original, all we're gonna do is add two. So when we're calculating the problem, we set it up like so, 22 units, per kilogram over one hour. We take the weight of the patient, which is 90 kilograms, cross out the kilograms, so we're left with 22 units per hour. You're gonna be left with 1980 units per hour. So now that we know that the new heparin infusion dosage is 1980 units per hour, what is the new infusion rate of cc's per hour? So, if we take what we calculated, which is 1980 units per hour, and we take what we already have, which is the 25,000 units in 500 cc's of D5W, we cross out the units, so we're left with cc's an hour, you're gonna end up getting about 39.6 cc's an hour for that new infusion rate. When it comes to math dosage calculation methods, it's up to personal preference. Whether you like ratios, desired over half, or you're like me and you like the dimensional analysis, you just gotta play around with it and practice and figure out which method works best for you. Thank you guys for watching my video. If you found that tutorial helpful, go ahead and like my video, leave a comment, and hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet. Hope you guys enjoy future episodes of Nursing and Flow. Take care. Busting through the bears that try to contain me. Moving on up, making moves of money endlessly. How you think I got this name? See money, it's my specialty.